Hi, we are Group O, and we will be presenting Topic 9 on health insurance and life insurance. My name is Alexa Gonzalez. I'm Nicholas Gilliard. I'm Michelle Quint. I'm Jonathan. Okay. Uh, our group will introduce the health insurance and life insurance. An insurance policy is a contract is a contract uh, with an insurance company. It spells out three parts. Uh, what losses are covered? What does the policy cost? Uh, who receives the payments if a loss occur occurs? Uh, why it's important? First, the need, uh, the need for both life and health insurance arise from principle seven, protect yourself against major catastrophes. The key concepts here are planning and control your losses. Second, health insurance provides protection for you and your family against financial devastating medical bills. Life insurance protects your family in case you die. Because if you haven't planned wisely, your death could be a financial catastrophe for your dependents. Um, there are three reason, uh, reasons caused the expensive health care. Firstly, over 50% of Americans receive government health uh, care uh, entitlements, and most Americans have medical insurance. As a result, there are no incentive for patients, doc doctors, or hospitals to restrain, restrain the medical bill. For, furthermore, Today's medical care has become extremely sophisticated. Drug companies have to spend many years and high costs on developing a new drug. Uh, and these costs will be passed on to the patients. Uh, also, high uh, more protective insurance costs are directly passed on to the patients. As a result, your company's insurance policy no longer cover covers all, all of your health care expenses, uh, and you will get limited health benefit package and uh, hair out of pocket payment for medical bills. And due to those reasons, in 2014, Patient Protection and uh, Affordable Care Act provided health coverage to those who are currently uninsured. It proved the importance of insurance again. Without a pro appropriate insurance, one accident or one illness can ruin your whole financial plan. Okay, let's look uh, uh, look in the details at uh, life insurance. Uh, we could use the table to determine whether you need life insurance. Uh, you may not uh, uh, need the life insurance if you are single and don't. Uh, have any dependents, and you are married a double income cup with no children. Uh, after you check your condition with this table, if you need the insurance, the next question will be how much uh, do you need? Uh, first, first you need to set a goal. For example, you want to provide enough money for your kids to go to the college or for your wife to buy her own home. After you set the goal, you need to figure out a number, how much insurance you need. So, uh, we need to start with, start with your net worth because the larger, uh, the larger your net worth, the less life insurance you need. Uh, don't, uh, don't forget to throw in numbers to com compensate for the inf inflation and uh, the earning, earnings on the pro um, possible future investments. There are two basic approaches to help you figure out the number. Let's talk about the earth multiple approaches. <clears throat> First, the formula is life insurance uh, equal income stream to be replaced um, multiple one, one minus the percentage of family income spent on the deceased, deceased uh, and needs and uh, multiple earnings multiple. Mm, the income stream to be replaced is the annual income lost due to the uh, death of a breadwinner. Uh, one minus the percentage of uh, uh, family income spent on deceased uh, needs is the family living expenses for the loss of the 
um, brand winner. We could see the data <coughs> below. It's uh, for loss of uh, of the um, brand winner. Thirty percent is for only one surviving family member. Twenty six percent is for a surviving family of two. Twenty two percent is for survive, surviving family of three. And then continue to drop two percent for each additional surviving family member. And the earth um the earnings multiple could be found on the earning multiple table. Mm. Wait. Uh, this is the earning multiple um, um, table. Uh, the first uh, the first list is the number of years you want you want for the loose earnings stream replaced. And the three percent, four percent, five percent are rates of the return on the insurance settlement after taxes and the inflation. By using uh, by using those two numbers, you could uh, match your earning um, earnings the multiple the long the longer you need to replace the income stream the greater the multiple uh, the higher the return you believe you can earn on the on the settlement the lower the multiple okay let's do a practice problem on this question uh, we could say uh, this guy make uh, make a uh, 80000 per year it's the uh, annual income stream uh, and this family is four people. So if uh, if Lowland were dead, it's a, a surviving family of three. And the family living expenses will be dropped uh, 22%. Then we could use the 20 years and the 5% uh, return to find the earning multiple. Let's go to uh, the last slide. You can see uh, the 20 years and the 5% percent will get a uh, 12.146 uh, for the earnings multiple. So use those, uh, use those numbers uh, and then you could uh, uh, find the re uh, final result. Uh, let's move to the another part. The need, uh, the need approach is a customer -led, customer math, uh, math. It's a bit more uh, complicated than the earnings multiplier, but uh, it allows you to account for the fact your family your family's needs may be different from the average. Let's look at the, some of those needs. Uh, the first one is the immediate uh, needs at the time of death. Uh, and the second is the debit elimination fun funds. The third one is the uh, uh, immediate uh, transition tra transitional funds for spouses uh, uh, who are already employed. The tra transition uh, transitional fund funds may be used to cover or leave of uh, advances, and the absence. Uh, and another one is the dependence expenses. Uh, the fifth, fifth, uh, fifth one is the spousal life uh, income. Uh, the supply, uh, supplemental income for the surviving spousal after the children have left home and uh, self uh, supporting. But before the surviving spousal uh, retires from whatever job he or she have. And uh, the next one is the uh, educational expenses for children. Uh, the, last, the last one is the retirement income. This, uh, this would uh, include any additional income stream that um, may be needed for the surviving spouse, uh, spouses. After retired, it, could, it would make up for any shortfall after um, taking into account social security and uh, pension benefits. Okay, now I will pass the, it to my group, uh, group mate. There's two types of life insurance, term insurance and cash value insurance. 
Term insurance is basically pure life insurance. Um, you pay a premium based on the probability that you'll die. For the premium, you receive a set amount of coverage for a set number of years. If you die, your beneficiary, re beneficiary receives your death benefits. An advantage is that it's uh, affordable and if your policy is renewed, um, the costs increase. There's three types of term insurance, renewable, decreasing in group. As far as renewable, if your health declines after the policy is bought, you can still renew it. The contract length varies from one to 30 years. And if it's not renewed, it'll be terminated. For decreasing, the premiums are constant. You can decline fast or slow. The premium level is decided on and face amounts decline. It's assumed that your wealth will increase when your children leave home. And for group, um, it's given without uh, examination. Um, people that can be associated for other purposes than insurance. Examples are employees of a company. So types of term insurance continue. Um, there's credit or mortgage group. This is provided by a lender for its debtors. This covers individuals outstanding debt. If a debtor dies while the policy is in effect, proceeds will pay debt. And then there's convertible. This can be converted into cash value life insurance at your discretion without medical exam or medical condition. Conversion can be, a, can be accompanied by corresponding increase in premium conversion feature offered during, on, during only first years of policy. Cash value insurance. This is more than simple life insurance. There is infinite variations. Um, components are life insurance and a savings plan. Parts of uh, your premium go towards life insurance and other parts go towards your savings. And with cash value insurance, when you die, your beneficiary is paid those savings as a part of your death benefit. cash value insurance features. It's a permanent type of insurance. If you make premium payments, eventually you'll get paid. There are three basic types of cash value insurance, which is whole, universal, and variable life. Whole insurance. Death benefit provided um, when the insured dies, turns 100, or reaches the maximum stated age. The face value of the policy will eventually be paid, uh, provided the premiums have been paid and the premiums are known in advance and in many cases are fixed. The cash value of the insurance policy is really your savings. You can borrow against the policy's cash value or alternatively, you can gain access to the cash value by terminating the policy. Access is gained by exercising your non-forfeiture non right. The non-forfeiture right gives you the policy's cash value and in exchange, you give your right to the death benefit. There are a number of different payment premium, there are a number of different premium payment patterns available to whole life poli policy holders, continuous level or straight premium, single premium or single payment and hybrid. Universal life insurance. Policy is a type of cash value insurance combining term insurance with a tax deferred savings feature in a package in which both the premiums and the benefits are flexible. You start out by paying a premium dictated by the insurance company. After the company subtracts the expenses and the mortality charges to pay for the life insurance protection, the remainder of the premium plus interest is added to the cash value. An important feature of universal life insurance is that the funds are broken down into three separate parts, the mortality charge or term insurance, the cash value or savings and the administrative expenses. Variable insurance. This is aimed at individuals who want to manage their own investments and are willing to take risks. It's a type of whole life in which the cash value and death benefit are tied to and vary according to the performance of a set of investments chosen by the policyholder. The policyholder, rather than the insurance company, takes on the investment risk. That is, if you decide how the cash value or savings uh, portion of your policy is invested. Variable insurance. Um, there's straight variable life, which has fixed premiums, and there's variable universal life, which has flexible premiums. Investment funds from which you choose is quite large, um, including money market, bond, and stock funds. Their terms are earned on a tax deferred basis, just as they are on other cash value insurance forms. 
You can switch between different types of investment funds without suffering any tax consequences. The value of a variable life insurance policy results from fixed premiums minus company expenses and the mortality charges. The variable life, variable life is similar to buying term insurance and investing money in mutual funds. Term versus cash value life insurance. So picking insurance can be difficult. For many individuals, term insurance is a better alternative. Um, it provides for your life insurance needs at a relatively low cost. The only true advantage of cash value insurance are tax advantages and the growth of the cash value on a deferred tax basis and the fact that life insurance isn't considered part of your estate. So fine tuning your policy and contract clause. Contract clauses are particular provisions or stipulations that appear in your insurance policy. And a few of the well-known ones are listed below. Uh, beneficiary provision, coverage grace period, loan cause, uh, and a couple others. Fine tuning your policy riders. Riders are special provisions that may be added to your policy, often add an additional cost to provide extra benefits or features to a policy in order to meet your specific needs. Again, several examples are waiver of premium for disability rider, um, accidental death benefit rider or multiple indemnity, um, guaranteed ins insurability rider, cost of living adjustment rider and living benefits rider. Fine tuning your policy and settlement or payout. So settlement or payout options are alternative ways a beneficiary can choose to receive the policy benefits upon the death of the insured. Um, it's important to keep in mind any possible tax implications regarding payout. In general, life insurance death benefits are not subject to income taxes. And several uh, examples include lump sum settlement, interest only settlement, installment payment settlement, and life annuity settlement. So buying life insurance. There are no guarantees with life insurance, although each state has a guarantee association to protect policyholders if an insurance company goes out of business. Generally, these states' funds have no assets. And if an insurance company goes under, the other insurance companies doing business in that state are taxed and the funds are used to take care of any claims. So at this point, I wanna pass it on to my teammate. So it's essential to choose an efficiently run life insurance company that will be around when your policy matures. And selecting a company is made much easier by a number of insurance rating services, including AM Best Fitch, Best Fitch, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Weiss, which all rate the ability of insurance companies to pay off claims. So selecting an agent, make sure you're aware of the agent's professional designation. Is the agent simply licensed to sell insurance or is he, is he or she a chartered life underwriter, the most rigorous of all life insurance designations? To begin the, the agent search process, make a list of prospects from good companies. Interview agents to find out which ones you feel comfortable with and whether they're full-time insurance agents with some degree of experience. And once you've selected several agents you feel comfortable with, have them give you a quote on your desired insurance plan. There are several methods you can use, but the most common are traditional net cost and interest adjusted net cost, also known as surrender cost index. First is the TNC and it's calculated by summing the premiums over a stated period, usually 10 or 20 years and subtracting from this, the sum of all dividends over that same period. The policy's cash value at the end of the stated period is then subtracted from this amount. And the final result is then divided by the number of years in the stated period and presented as total net cost per some level of coverage. And it also doesn't take time value of money, money into consideration, so it's practically meaningless. Next is the IANC, which is basically TNC, but it does recognize time value of money. However, this method depends on the choice of the appropriate discount rate and the estimate of the dividends and cash value from the policy. So when deciding if life insurance is for you, you need to decide how much you need, and then it'll turn to a cash value insurance decision. Or if you decide on term insurance, consider shopping on the web. 
where you can find instant quotes and excellent rates. And if you just and if you end up deciding on cash value insurance, then things then get a bit more complicated. But it's because almost it's almost impossible to compare different policies all with different features and different assumptions, but you can still go online and get quotes on the different kinds. So health insurance, uh, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act was signed into law in 2010, and it represents a major shift in healthcare in America. Much of what it does is aim to make sure that almost everyone has health insurance. However, it doesn't replace the old system your insurance will still come from a private insurance company. And there are still plenty of healthcare options available, but most people rely on their employer for health insurance coverage. Employer sponsored healthcare coverage usually isn't free. So employees do pay a portion of the premium and your employer ends up paying the rest. The 2010 Healthcare Reform Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. It prohibits insurance companies from denying coverage to those with pre-existing health conditions. It allows children to stay on their parents' insurance policy until they turn 26. It sets up insurance exchanges to make it easier to purchase insurance and provides tax credits for insurance purchases to small businesses and the poor and middle class. And it prohibits insurance companies from dropping people who will get sick from restricting annual and life, lifetime limits on what these companies will pay. And in addition, for seniors specifically, it works at closing the gap in Medicare prescription drug coverage known as the donut hole. And basic health insurance includes a combination of hospital, surgical, and physician expense insurance sold in a combination with basic health insurance. Many policies provide basic health insurance and then allow you to choose from a long list of policy options. Slide 40, Yaokun. Hospital insurance is generally part of every insurance plan. It covers the costs associated with a hospital stay, including room charges, nursing costs, operating room fees, and drugs supplied by the hospital. But depending on the policy, hospital insurance may reimburse you for specific charges, give you a set amount of money for each day you are hospitalized, or even pay the hospital directly for your expenses. Almost all plans, regardless of their type, impose limits on both the daily hospital costs and the number of days covered. Surgical insurance covers part or all the cost of surgery. A surgical policy generally lists the specific operations it covers and either sets a maximum dollar amount for each operation or even reimburses the surgeon for what is considered reasonable and customary based on typical charges in that region. And although surgical insurance may not completely cover surgery charges, it should reduce the amount to a manageable level. Um, basic health insurance, uh, again, to expand on it, physician expense insurance covers physician's fees outside of surgery, including office or home visits, lab fees, and x-rays not performed in a hospital. Major medical expense insurance is aimed at covering medical costs not covered by basic health insurance. So it's meant to offset all the financial effects of a catastrophic illness where basic health insurance leaves off, major medical insurance is expected to take over. And it generally doesn't provide complete coverage, but instead allows for deductibles and coinsurance payments in order to keep costs down. So dental and eye insurance, as the names imply, dental insurance provides dental coverage and eye insurance provides coverage for eye examinations, glasses, and contact lenses. And cho your choices for basic healthcare, um, basically there's two. So first fee for service or traditional indemnity plans or managed healthcare or prepaid care plans under a fee for service or traditional indemnity plan. 
Thanks, Alexa. So I'm going to be expanding on different types of healthcare plans. First, we have fee for service plans, which is essentially where the doctor or hospital bills you directly for the costs and the, uh, the insurance company reimburses you. They usually in include a co-insurance provision, which provision it defines the percentage of each claim that the insurance company will pay. And uh, most of these plans also include a co-payment or deductible. So on the contrary, managed healthcare plans, they're offered by health maintenance organizations and they allow members to access needed services from specified doctors and hospitals. The main advantage of a managed healthcare plan is its efficiency. It offers you healthcare directly and there's considerably less in the way of paperwork. Health maintenance organizations or HMOs are one type of managed healthcare. Uh, the most popular form is the health maintenance, health maintenance organization, which is essentially a prepaid insurance plan that entitles members to the services of participating doctors, hospitals, and clinics. And uh, they pay a flat fee for this privilege and then can select a managing physician who is responsible for their care. There are essentially three basic types of HMOs, individual practice, group practice plans, and point of service plans. An individual practice plan is an HMO made of independent doctors. There's a group practice plan, which are generally employed directly by the HMO, and then point of service, which allows you to seek medical treatment from both affiliated and non-affiliated doctors. Preferred provider organizations are one, of, are one type of managed healthcare, and it's a bit like a crossover between a traditional plan and an HMO. Under a preferred provider organization, an employer or insurer negotiates with a group of doctors and hospitals to provide health care for its employees or members at reduced rates. Group health insurance refers to the way health insurance is sold rather than to the characteristics of the insurance policy. This insurance is provided to a specific group of individuals and it's, a health, cover and it's health coverage that you personally purchase for yourself or your family. Government sponsored plans fall into two broad categories. So we have state plans and federal plans and uh, workers compensation laws date back from the early 1900s. And uh, it's when our economy changed and predominantly changed from predominantly agricultural to in industrial. And then uh, we have the Medicare program, which was enacted in 1968 to provide benefits to persons with disabilities. So talking about some spending accounts, first we have flexible spending account, which is a savings plan established by an employer that allows each employee to have pre-tax earnings deposited into a specific, specific account. Health savings accounts, they're another option to help people pay for medical expenses. Those who may take advantage of HSAs include self-employed persons, small business owners, Employees of small to medium sized businesses and anyone under 65 who can pay for healthcare on their own. To continue your coverage, you must notify your employer of your intent to make payment on your insurance within 60 days of leaving the company, depending on why you left. And then uh, choosing not to be insured. If you can afford health insurance, but don't have it, you may have to pay a fee or penalty and that fee doesn't really mean you're covered. You still have to pay for all your health care. The fear penalty is sometimes called the individual responsibility payment. And then uh, what to look for in a health plan. Who's covered? Terms of payment exclusions. Health insurance policies can cover individuals, families, or groups. The terms of payment define your financial obligation on a health care claim and include any deductibles and co-insurance payments. Some policies contain provisions that exclude certain injuries and illnesses. And now I'm going to pass it to Nick to talk about choosing a plan. All right, choosing an insurance plan. The health insurance marketplace is a new way for you to buy health, buy health insurances. And to make plans easier to compare, um, categorizes them into five, uh, five categories. Um, you have bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and catastrophic. Um, each of them, uh, are different in the percentages that your plan pays versus the percentage that you pay. Um, and the last one, uh, catastrophic, um, if your, your coverage option, it influences your coverage option if you are under 30 or have a very low income. 
Um, when picking a category and a health insurance plan, there's a number of things you sh should consider. The category you choose affects how your premium costs each month and what portion of the bill you pay for things like hospital visits or prescription medications. Um, it also affects your total out-of-pocket costs and plans in all categories offer the same set of 10 essential health benefits and categories uh, do not reflect the quality of care the plans provide. Well, when choosing health insurance plans, um, keep this general rule of thumb in mind. The lower the premium, the higher the out-of-pocket cost when you need care. The higher the premium, the lower the out-of-pocket cost when you need care. Um, think about healthcare needs of your household when considering which marketplace insurance plan to buy. Um, are you likely to need a lot of care or just a little? And other options like Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program, uh, CHIP, may be available to you. The marketplace also offers catastrophic plans to people under 30 years old and to people with very low incomes. So disability insurance, like all others that have been mentioned today, is a type of health insurance that pays injured people in case they can't work because of an injury, sickness, or accident. Anyone that relies on income from a job needs disability insurance if you get hurt. And what is a disability? Any condition, body or mind, that causes someone to struggle with certain activities and even with world interaction. So this 47% is the chance a 30 year old has of getting a disability that would force them to miss 90 or more days of work um, resulting in them needing disability insurance. So some sources of disability insurance include employer, social security, workers comp, or um, just a general individual policy. So the cost of disability insurance varies depending how old you are. It also depends on health history, the job you have, the policy you've picked. So for example, weighting an amount, um, generally, on average, it costs 1% to 4% of your annual income, so you should get paid 2% to 6% of the, of the policy's monthly benefit in premium. So some disability features that just make sense are residual payments, so the policyholder receives some disability benefit once returning to work, even if they're just part-time. Some require 20% income drop compared to the beginning of income to qualify for residual payments. Next, we have partial payment. So 50% of the total disability limit for a limited time period, generally six months, and the insured is partially disabled. So the duration of benefits could pay two years, five or 10 years until retirement. It covers people about five years and the average claim lasts three years according to the Council for Disability Awareness. And to continue on to that, um, non-cancelable insurance policy, policy insurance company that they really can't cancel, um, they can increase premiums on or reduce benefits as long as premiums are paid. So for rehab, not all insurance plans cover it, some will pay some of the benefits incurred if you enroll in a rehab program provided by the insurance. Additional to other benefits you will pay for and qualify for. And this essentially helps you return to work. So instead of hurting you, it helps you. And the waiver of premium exempts you from paying a premium if you're seriously injured. And it differs from company to company depending on which insurance you have or depending on which um, company you work. Thanks, Alexa. Now to finish this off, I'm going to talk about long-term insurance and why it might be important, just some provisions. So long-term health care is coverage that provides nursing home care, home health care, and personal care for anyone over 65 with a chronic or disabling condition that needs constant supervision. They offer more flexibility and options compared to similar programs such as Medicaid, uh, they usually cover all or part of assisted living facilities costs for anyone with a chronic condition and over the required age. It's available to anyone who can't afford it, but it's usually very expensive and it's also tax deductible. So just some important things to consider if you are of age. 
the main thing is it's very expensive. The average cost of a private room is over a hundred thousand dollars a year. And if you want to choose the home care in home care option, it'll run you over $50,000 a year. Long-term insurance also requires the insurer to be unable to perform at least two ADLs, which includes things like bathing, dressing, eating. These are defined as just daily activities in life that you need to be able to do. And the benefit period is can last from one year to a lifetime. They either have a defined benefit period or, or lifetime and uh, the total amount of time, which is the total amount of time or dollars to which benefits will be paid. So the waiver premium, this is a big deal. Insurance stays in force while receiving benefits. With long-term care insurance, you pay premiums and dollar amounts you know in advance, allowing you to be able to budget for your premium payment. This policy pays up to its coverage limits for the long-term care services you need when you need them. Most policies will waive the premiums during the time you're receiving benefits and some will not. Then another important, important point is protection from inflation, which is designed to allow policyholders to make sure that the benefits they receive can keep up with general price levels because insurance could be way more expensive in 30 years than compared to now. So it protects you from that. Thank you. And we're happy to answer any questions now. Yeah, yeah, Kuhn, you can just stop it and then cut this part out. <laughs>